Sorry about that, Rico. My schedule's been crazy all day, though. Oh, are you good? You're good. <sighs> How you doing, though, man? Good. I'm trying to get this. No, you're good, bro. It's all good. Hey, man. Dude, I'm doing good, man. But uh, how you been doing, though, man? Fight, uh, you just had that grappling tournament with uh, Ramiro. He got the dub in that. Unanimous oh, yeah. decision, I think, right? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Congratulations, dude. That was that was a big win. Thank you, man. I mean, Ramiro's a super tough competitor, you know what I'm saying? Nothing but respect. I'm a super great guy. So it was it was really one of those things where it was like an honor and a privilege to face someone of that caliber. So I'm, like, super happy. Hell, yeah. You guys uh... – what was it? You guys just got done rolling at uh, Rufus Sport a couple of days ago, didn't you, for your fight camp? Uh, yeah, so he was like, uh, we hit each other up. He's like, yo, I'll, uh, he's like, uh, send me the link, you know, so he could buy a ticket for my fight. And he's like, whenever you want to, like, train or get together, we can. And I was like, actually, the guy I'm fighting, I could really use you, like, you know, your insight and your knowledge, you know what I'm saying? So he helped me out a little bit for my camp, and we got together and rode a bit. That's dope. How'd that go? Was that good? Yeah, super good. And like I said, Romero's like, Super great guy, great competitor, super knowledgeable, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude has a ton of knowledge. So I was, I was happy I got to pick his brain a little bit. Oh, yeah. Did he have the uh, Did he have the gloves on, or were you guys just rolling? Oh, he had the gloves on, yeah. Nice, nice. I've never seen him throw hands before. Oh, no, he told me. I, I didn't know until, like, after the fact. But he was like, yeah, he's like, I don't really do striking like that. I was like, I understand. But it was, <laughs> I was going to got to, like, you know what I'm saying, like, do a little bit, get, like, a little introductory into it. So it was cool. Dude, I saw when you guys, uh, it was Ramiro who posted the video. It's like when you guys were doing the face off right before the fight, not mm -hmm. fight, but uh, match. And then like they had you hug each other. Is that how you guys have to start in grappling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was really, um, it was really weird, like the rules, right? So we were supposed to have gloves on. Then we didn't have to have gloves on, right? Then we had to start in a 50 50 position. I was like the only thing I was like a for sure rule, you know what I'm saying? And like, Pretty much just to like force the action, make sure there's no stalling, things like that. So you're just always like pushing the pace. It was different, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like still gonna be the same with grapple or whatever. I didn't get to uh I didn't get to see the match. Um, but like how did it how did it go? Like when you guys start in that 50 50, do you guys just you know use it or do you guys just let go because that's not really normal to start like that? Well, the thing is if we stay we stay, you know, 50 50, you know, with the body lock, if we let go and we try to like push him back off. They consider that disengaged, so immediately they'll start, like in a bad position, right? So the first time you do it, you start like they the person starts in your guard. You do it again, side control, back, mount, etc. So like we really have to push the pace. And if we did disengage, we have to go like right away. You know, what I'm saying looking for action. So there's uh, no getting out of that, really. Yeah. So you definitely had like unless you want to end up like in a bad spot. You know, what I'm saying you had to push the pace, like you had to engage. I think that's a good rule, though. I mean, it keeps things action packed, keeps things competitive. Yeah, exactly. And you never want to be like doing five, 10, 15 minutes of just like stalling or running around, right? You want to have a good pace match, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 I mean, the people buy the tickets for a reason. They want to be entertained and you want it to be exciting. So I feel like that's the best way with that style and that format to press the action. For sure. Dude, I think I think the gloves, though, would have been a bad idea. Like, because because like if you have them on, it's almost like maybe you want to use them and it's not even intentional. It's just reflex. Like, could you imagine like that'd be bad? I'm saying because like they they was in the like the idea of the concept to try to do like combat grappling. Right? But some guys, you know, especially if they don't train with us, it's like some some people say no. Some people said yeah to that idea. And then I think eventually like last second, they're just like, no, nah, we're not doing gloves. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I'm oh, sorry, my uh, computer's glitching here. Um, no, yeah, I think that'd be, uh, I think that'd be a bad idea. Like just, you know, I guess, I guess if you're, what's that new jujitsu called? Like, con is it just called combat jujitsu where they're slapping each other with the open palm? Yeah, 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 combat jujitsu. Do you think, yeah. you think you'd ever do that? Oh yeah, for sure. It's definitely something I would definitely like want to explore. I like it. Cause it's like, um. Not that jujitsu isn't relevant to uh, like street fighting because it is. I mean, like if you ever go on the ground like that, I mean, you're going to come out on top regardless. But I think it adds a whole new aspect of relevancy because now you can open hand strike and replicate more of a, a street fight. I think it's pretty cool. I like that idea. Yeah. And that's what I said. Like, it's one of those things where like, oh, like you sitting there hanging in guard and then somebody just like smack you in the face. Like he forces you to like do something, you know? Yeah. Is that what uh is that what Mike Mutter was doing at that night? Um I mean, not like 
his match was a regular match too, but I think like you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know, like um, cause I didn't see like the last bit because I had ran to like the back of the bathroom or whatever. But um, I mean his was like a normal match too, but I feel like his slaps they weren't intentional necessarily, but like just like pass guard or something, you know what I'm saying? Okay. How'd you how do you guys know each other? You guys you call them pops? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like an inside joke, so I always call them like my pops and my dad or whatever. You know? <laughs> People like you know, they believe, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, not that we look alike or anything, but, you know, we both brown skin. They said, oh, yeah, that's his kid. <laughs> but, like, I met him, I want to say a couple of years ago, you know what I'm saying, just from, like, tournaments and seeing him all the time, networking, connecting, and stuff like that. So, um, and then when I came up here last year, you know, we rolled, I would go to open mass with him, things like that, and then we just stayed connected. Hell, yeah. Dude, he's he's a fucking uh, uh, a great jujitsu player, but he's also a character. I mean, that guy's hilarious. Dude, like you ever see like his Facebook post, like he just be straight clown and dude, dude's like he's great. For sure. Oh yeah, dude. I love the memes he makes. He's really good at self promoting. Yeah, dude, the dude gets you hyped and want to tune in, man. And that's why that's like that's why he's my pops, <laughs> man. <laughs> You've been going to uh, open guard a little bit here and there, haven't you? Yeah, yep. I've been going there probably like the last like month or two. You know what I'm saying? Just like because I was going there helping out a couple of guys with their camps and their fights. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get them ready, give them like a little bit of like my insight and my knowledge that maybe they can try to like utilize a little bit. And I, I really like it over there. You know what I'm saying? Just like it was always good to cross train, go to different avenues because everybody rolls different. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I feel like too when you stay at your gym for so long, you get a little bit of like complacency. So it's always good to have different bodies, different styles. People move different ways, and they have the wives to the what. So it's cool. Nice. Was it uh, – who were you training with? Was it like Alex Biddle and those guys? Yeah, like Alex Biddle, Janwell Perez, uh, Mike Mutter, uh, Tyler Wolf, and a few other guys. Okay. Yeah, with uh, the guys that were uh, fighting at WFC, right? Yeah, yeah. yep. Yeah, 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 Doing – I remember I saw you there at that thing. That that fight card was stacked, dude. I mean, like every single fight on that card was an absolute banger. Yeah, that was, it was exciting to see that because, um, I mean, I only been in Sheboygan maybe twice, you know what I'm saying, once beforehand. But it was, it was cool to be there in that atmosphere and then see all the fights, see all the people. And it's like, this is dope. This is a really cool event. Oh, yeah. Dude, there was, um, I forgot the guy's name, but he went to uh, Unified Mixed Martial Arts. No, not Unified. Um uh where zach otto coaches I, I can't think of the gym's name off the top of my head um pure vita yeah pure vita yeah. and it was the guy with the long hair and he kicked the other dude in the head and just knocked him out cold in the kickboxing fight that yeah, one yeah. everyone went crazy for and then uh i know you trained with him but alex biddle when he got knocked out that one was a that was a really good fight too though. i mean like unfortunate ending for alex but i mean that was a good fight for him Oh, yeah, it's definitely it's always, like, you know, a learning curve, whether you win or lose, because, like, when you win, it's like, yeah, I won, but, like, there's still things when you work on, but when you lose, it's like, okay, back to the drawing board, what I got to do to be better. In it. For sure. When do you, um, when do you train with these, one, sec, one sec here, sorry, what's up? Yeah, with Rico, my brother's saying, what's up, Rico? Huh? Rico Tyler. What's up, man? Yo, what's up, brother? I can't, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I have headphones on. No, he's a fan of yours, dude. He's uh, he's getting some merch, my brother, from you. Oh, love, man. That's dope. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of merch, though, dude, that new design you got was sick, bro. Oh, yeah, thanks, man. I, like, it, it was really cool to get with them. When oh, so like, what was that? Just um, was that just some random company, or like, did you know the people who are making it? Um, I mean, I had seen MMA T before because they work with like a couple of like well known fighters and stuff. And then, uh, there's a couple people at my gym that are like uh sponsored by them and stuff. So there's like, yay, hey, like I think uh my teammate Lower had put me on to reach out to him and stuff. So I reached out to him. They're like, yeah, we'll sponsor you this and that. I got to talk to him, get to know him a little bit. And then you know, we was talking about some designs and concepts we went for a shirt. And I was like, I was just like, I just want Rico like. On the front, they was like, I was, they was like, you don't want nothing else? I was like, I really don't have, like, any ideas. Like, yeah. And then he came up with, like, my image from, like, one of my old fights and then put that together. Then all my sponsor logos on the back. I'm like, this is cool. I'm like, Dude. right now, it's pretty good for ticket sales right now as far as, like, you know, man, the shirt's getting out really cool hell yeah dude no yeah you'll definitely see me with the rico tally thing uh for the apfc fight i mean i may not be there physically but i mean i'll be wearing the shirt for sure dude no that design though was was sick i mean uh 
it, it's so like it's so simple yet it's so like advanced you know what i mean yeah 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 <laughs> yeah that's, that's what i like you know when like with logo like nike it's just the swoosh but it's like you know that's nike like everyone who sees that anywhere in the world knows that's nike you know it's like i think your logo is kind of like kind of in that realm where it's like so simple but it's so easy to tell like who it is you know yeah exactly i think i thought it was sick though dude i appreciate it man it, it means a lot so like you know what i'm saying it, each thing that happens in life you know what i'm saying whatever we do or whatever we're trying to accomplish it like it means something along or you know so it's like a milestone or like whatever goal or objectives you have to get to where you want to be. So it, it's definitely a step in the right direction. For sure. Dude, I'll, um, I'm going to link uh, your shirts um, in the description. So maybe people will buy some in the description. So they'll see it. So yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, you're, you're going to have uh, APFC. You're going to have the fans going crazy for you, man. I'm excited for you to fight there, man. That is going to be, that card is stacked. It's going to be phenomenal, man. That's, that's, that's what card is phenomenal card. Would you say this is the biggest fight of your career so far? I believe so. Yeah, just because, like, you know what I'm saying? It's Anthony Pendis' card, right? This is going to be on UFC Fight Fast streams or, like, millions of people have UFC Fight Fast. So I'm very excited to go out there and put on, like, my best performance today. Hell yeah, dude. And uh, how you been training for the fight? I mean, obviously, you, you're you someone, like we talked about on our previous podcast, you're someone that's always in the gym. You're someone that's always in shape. But how have you turned it on since uh, you knew that this fight was happening? Yeah, so similar to, like, my last camp, I incorporated strength and conditioning and uh, a lot of cardio, you know what I'm saying? Like, Tuesday, Thursdays, we're cushion, dude. We run at, like, 9 in the morning, you know what I'm saying? So, like, running, getting my sprints in, you know what I'm saying? And uh, cleaning up my diet, watching what I'm eating, you know what I'm saying? Like, weeks out, you know, months out, essentially, compared to, like, a, you know, a few days out or whatever, you know? So, just really just been fine-tuning and just, like, honing everything in. For sure. All right, what what uh, what way do you fight that same way you always do? Yeah, 135, yeah. How much how much you walking around at? Uh right now I'm like 149, 150. Oh, okay. So I mean like not 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 anything that's not normal for you. I mean that's kind of where you're always at, aren't you? Yeah. I mean I usually walk around probably like like between 58 and 160. Oh damn. Oh, okay. So that's 25 pound cut. Yeah. Give or yeah. take. Damn, yeah. dude. That's a lot. I thought I thought you were closer than that walking around. Uh -huh. Dude, I like, I mean, really, it's, it's been going really smooth too with the weight cut. Like, a lot of it's just been dieting down and the weight just been falling off. How long do you think uh, you can keep fighting at 135? I like, 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 like your body, like, letting you be able to go up and down that, that weight? I feel like I'll be able to fight at it for a long time, long as I just really, the biggest thing is just managing what I'm eating and just uh, staying disciplined with, like, you know what I'm saying, my diet and my nutrition, you know what I'm saying, and all that good stuff. Okay, for sure. And uh, who's like, who's your diet uh, dietitian? Because I always see you guys um, at Rufus Sport. You guys are always posting the meals and stuff you got coming in. Is there, uh, is there someone special? Yeah, so uh, we have Fresh Lean. I mean, but they only come in like once a month, you know what I'm saying? It's beginning of the month for all the fighters. But I have uh, my man Jojo, uh, Jojo King. He does like, um, he's pretty much like the chef for most of the fighters and even Duke, right? So he cooks up the food, he meal preps it and stuff like that. And we also um uh, a couple of guys here. We also have a uh, fresh lean as a sponsor. So they, you know what I'm saying? They ship us out like a big uh, package of like um, food, or, like, you know what I'm saying? Like once a week. And that has like pre uh, pre cooked food that we just got to heat up, put in the microwave. And like the calories are already counted, probably like less than 400 calories. And that's all just healthy food we can eat. For sure. Yeah. I mean, dude, they, uh, it seems like um, all those guys that are sending you food fresh lean um, and the other ones you mentioned, they seem like it's always very, uh, like a visually appealing food like it looks really good you know and it definitely is you know what i'm saying when they're sending you like freaking like uh salmon with like rice and it's like some little shrimp on the side so good man so you, good, say, man. you say <laughs> salmon Sal yeah i don't know the brown salmon salmon <laughs> Sa salmon isn't it yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> i'm just giving you shit bro <laughs> Um, but APFC, what do you know about your opponent? Uh, is is he someone like uh, that's going to be trouble for you, or are you expecting a pretty easy fight? This, I mean, this is actually like the opponent I have now, Josh Krigic. I believe that's how you said it. He's a, a new opponent because originally I had another guy, but like, you know, saying he went MIA or whatever. So it took him a hot minute to find me somebody new. Uh, this guy stylistically is a perfect uh, matchup, I believe, because he's a jiu jitsu guy. So it's like, well, I'm a jiu jitsu guy, you know what I'm saying? 
And uh, he does a little bit of Muay Thai scene, he fought in bare knuckle, things like that. So I feel like for me, I'm not going to say he's going to be an easy fight, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like that'll be disrespectful. But I, I see it being a good matchup, but I don't see myself being, like, overwhelmed by anything he does. Like, he goes to the ground. I know I'm good there. We stand up. I know I'm good there. He, wanna go to, he wants to go against the cage. I know we're good there, too. So we've just been working all those things. And I just feel like wherever he thinks he's good at, I'm going to be great at Hell yeah, man. I'm excited to hear that. Dude, I was um I was nervous because I know um you were supposed to fight at NAFC and that fight got canceled. Cause I was really I was really excited to see you fight there. And then I heard that um you potentially lost your opponent for APFC. And I was like, fuck, like when's Rico gonna fight next? Like I was a little nervous for you. Was it was it a little nerve wracking for you? Yeah, a little bit, but I mean it's to be expected, right? Guys like pull out and lose fights all the time so it's just like you can't really get discouraged with especially like you know saying at the pro level it's just more so like okay i'm gonna get back to the gym you know what i'm saying if i gotta be on a shelf a little bit i'm gonna be on a shelf a little bit but best believe i'm gonna keep working keep improving my skills keep grinding keep getting better you know what i'm saying especially as like as a martial artist and just as a, like you know what i'm saying as a human being outside of you know what I'm so just gotta stay ready whenever because whenever they call me you know it's, it's either I'm, I'm gonna answer that call or i'm gonna hit the decline button so i'm, I'm ready to hit the you know, saying the accept button for sure. And I feel like um, in mixed martial arts, especially with the path that you're trying to take, because I think we've spoke before, like you want to be in the UFC one day or a major promotion and you want to be a champion of that promotion. Look at uh, Christian Rodriguez, for example. I mean, he got a call on what, seven days notice and he answered it. And then he got a three fight contract. I mean, in this sport, you got to answer the call and you got to say yes. And, and it's cool that um, you're not scared to answer that call. Yeah, because, I mean, in a, any given moment, it, it could be your time. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys, like, they, like you know what I'm saying, not like anybody in particular, but if they call you up and you say no, who knows? It might be years again before they give you another call. So, like, the time is now, you know what I'm saying, especially for most of us, like, we're either at that age where, like, it's, like, now or never, or, like, maybe for, for some of us, it's, like, too late, you know what I'm saying? So why wait when it's, can't, it's not guaranteed compared to now, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying now that it's guaranteed, but, like, you never know where it's going to take you. For sure. And, dude, you are um, – obviously, you're a Street Beefs world champion. I mean, you <laughs> fought you fought at some high stages in your life. Um, but how does it feel to go to another stage of, um, of I guess, uh, what's the word? Um, statue, pedigree, I guess, whatever. How does it feel to go to another level where you're fighting on Anthony Pettis' fight card? I mean, I love Showtime Pettis, dude. That guy – Everything he does, every fight that he's in is entertaining. I mean, he's world famous, bro. How does that feel that, that you know, was someone that you were watching as a kid, now you're fighting on their undercard? It's, it's surreal, right? Because, like, it's like, damn, am I really here? Because most of the time we think to myself, like, damn, I kind of, I'm like, I didn't make it, but, like I'm, like, I'm here, you know what I'm saying, compared to, like, back in the day just like oh you know maybe maybe not but now that i'm here it's like it's surreal and it's also it's humbling and a blessing you know what i'm saying because like not a lot of guys get opportunities especially like where i grew up at you know what i'm saying like most of my friends that i was really close with a lot of them are either dead you know what i'm saying or like in jail or like suffering from some type of like drug addiction so like the few of us that are doing something you know like positive and like very like health good sustaining or you know we're actually doing something so like for us to like all be on this journey and for me to be on this journey is really like a blessing for me and it's humbling because like coming from like nothing to trying to become something so it, it's definitely like a great thing to be a part of yeah it's like uh it's like that saying um greatness from small beginnings right yeah all the time yep yeah man uh yeah i guess i i guess i didn't know that was your background man i guess uh i thought it was a little more um you know sunshine and rainbows than than i guess it was yeah, I wish, but you know, like what they say, tough times make tough people. So everything I went through in life, you know what I'm saying? It made me the person I am today. Like if I had to go back in time and change something, I, I, would, I wouldn't change anything. You know, I'm happy that I went through the struggles and hardships that I did because that's what makes me the man I am today, you know? So all that builds character. And I believe my character is just a strong-minded individual that's ready to take on the world. Hell yeah, man. And you're so, you're so kind and, you know, um, uh, you just uplift everyone around you, you know, it's, uh, it's, I think that you really, uh, do the most you can with everything you have. I think, uh, I think you're an awesome dude. Yeah, man, that means a lot. Oh yeah.
Dude, um, but I, I, I always, t- I, I, I told you this on the last podcast and I didn't mean it as an insult, but it was like, you're such a nice dude where it's like, it's hard to see you fighting, like turning that switch on and off. But talking about that switch, turning it on and off, um, your most recent fight at NAFC, which feels like forever ago, but you're, you're talking a little shit to your guy, huh? You're, you know, you got on top of him, you're beating him up a little bit. And then the guy, uh. Uh, what is he laying on his back and you're standing up and you're like, come on, where are you at now? Where are you at now? That's <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's probably like the most you see, you'll see me do. I think he said something like, he's like, you're not doing nothing, bro. But I'm really, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like, you you don't lost two rounds. You know what I'm saying? I'm beating you up. That's why like I put my hands up over him a little bit. So like, that's the most like, probably like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like trash talking I'll do in the cage essentially, but. Yeah, it's definitely. Ha- I'll probably have some moments like that for sure, dude. It was funny because I was there with my uh, my buddies, and they were all listening to uh, to our podcast, the one, the one that you and I did together. And they were saying, "Oh, I thought Rico never talked shit because that's what you were saying." <laughs> and then, of course, Rico just starts talking shit to this guy, dude. It was it was awesome, man. And I mean, you dominated that match so easily. I mean, I think you took him down within the first what ten seconds, and it was over from there. But uh, I thought it was cool, too, in that fight, too, like uh, at NAFC, how they make you run through the fans to go get your paycheck after the fight. Yeah. I think that's like it's cool because everyone gets to, like, you know, take pictures with you. And I'm sure all you want to do is go get that fight check. But everyone just wants to get their picture taken and say, nice job, Rico. I mean, it's kind of the best of both worlds. Like, you get it. You get complimented on the way to go in to get paid. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely a surreal feeling. Like, like, I remember walking out. You know what I'm saying? Coming out to the fight, like everybody's like, I remember these. It was like a group of little kids, right? And they're all just like chanting my name, just saying, Rico, Rico. And I remember just being so hyped, ready for like the beat to drop on my music. And then I get out there, I'm like, touch, I'm like giving everybody like high fives, like staring straight ahead, just ready to go. And then soon after the fight, just like that little sigh of like relief. And then everybody's like hugging me, congratulating me, taking pictures. I'm just like, man, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Like, like you have you told me like, 10 years ago that this is where I would be at and this is the moments I'd be having. I'd be like, yeah, maybe. But like now, like experience, I'm just like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, man. So Dude, you, and you're an exciting uh, fighter too. Usually a lot of people will say that grapplers aren't the most exciting fighters to watch, but you do a good job of keeping your fights exciting, I think. Yeah, sir. I, I try my best to like press the act because like I said, I know I got like friends, family and occasion. They're they not paying money just to see me like lay on somebody for, like you know, 15 minutes or, or less, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going out there trying to dominate, trying to finish you the whole time, pushing the pace. You know, I got the cardio, so I might as well just go, go, go. For sure. Do you, uh, I guess you don't probably want to leak it too much, but uh, I got to ask as a, a media's perspective, what's your game plan going into this fight? Uh, game plan going into this fight is really just, you know what I'm saying, just um being a better fighter than I was last time. So essentially just, beating my performance from last time you know since the last time it was more so like take down orientated this fight i'm like i'm showing everything i'm trying to put all the pieces together for this masterful performance right you're gonna see me with the hands the feet the knees the elbows the takedowns the clinch the cage so you're about to see me just put it all together for this fight let's go dude i've heard uh i've heard a lot of people uh not a lot of people but i've heard some people that you're close with they say that you're a phenomenal grappler you're phenomenal uh jujitsu player phenomenal wrestler um but you got sneaky hands like everyone's so focused on your ground game where it's like wait rico can knock you out too let's not forget about that (laughs) do you uh you plan to i I really want to see you knock someone out man that's kind of what i'm getting at yeah that's like one of those things is like it's underrated because you really don't get to see me use my hands a lot because my grappling's so good and i take people down but like i work the shit out my striking with like kush and justin and uh justin linky you know, and, and stuff like that. So I'm always in there working, putting in pads, doing the kickboxing classes, you know what I'm saying? So this is one of those fights where you'll finally get to see the hands. Let's sure. go, dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to hold you to that, Rico. I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> so she, so to hear about it, like, you hear about me hitting one with, like, a one-two and he, like, drops down or something, I choke him. And so <laughs> yeah, this for sure. Let's go, dude. Uh, reckless, right? It's going to be reckless, isn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> um, dude, uh, so go into a gym like Rufus Sport. Obviously, that's a very kickboxing orientated gym because Duke Rufus, four time kickboxing world champion, Scott Cushman, also a phenomenal striker. And then you got people like Anthony Pettis and Sergio Pettis who go there where they're into the, you know, tricks, martial arts, and a lot of Taekwondo, a lot of, a lot of stand up game. What is, um, what's a practice look like for you? Cause obviously your game does go to more um, jujitsu and ground game. Do you end up working more on your striking at Rufus sport or is it, do they let you kind of work on what is best for you? If that's a, makes sense. Yeah. So like um, typically just like it to get it like a little insight on the schedule um, Monday through Friday, like, you know what I'm saying? For as far as like pro practice goes, we train 12, uh, 12 at noon to 2 PM. So, like, on those days, we're doing, like, everything martial arts, you know what I'm saying? So, we're focusing on everything, essentially. And uh, at nighttime classes, like, um, Tuesday, Thursday, we have, like, Muay Thai team or kickboxing fight team. And then in between that, you know what I'm saying? They had a civilian, like, the regular gi, no gi classes and the regular kickboxing classes. So, me personally, I try to do, like, all those classes and fit them to the schedule. So, I usually end up doing, like, three, four, five classes within a day. So, when I'm doing that, especially, like, the – the noon practices, you know what I'm saying? We're working everything, right? The strikes, the kicks, the takedowns, the clinch, you know what I'm saying? Some days we might, like, have a specific thing orientated to one or the other, but we're putting everything together, you know what I'm saying? Striking it to the grappling, you know, vice versa. So you get to stay well-rounded then? Yes, sir. Yeah. For sure. Who's uh, Who coaches the grappling? Is it still Gerald? So right now uh, it's uh, Chris Wright, who's, uh, brown, who's uh, like, last year's brown belt world champion. So he's been teaching the class. Phenomenal, phenomenal grappling. You know what I'm saying? Probably some of the slickest grappling in the game. So he's been teaching the pro practices as well. Is he the – oh, no, I'm thinking of Ben Carpenter. That's what, Oh, is uh, is Lemke, is he the firefighter? Yeah, firefighter, yep. Okay, dude, that guy, yeah, he's he's dangerous on the ground. His jujitsu game is lethal. He's cold with it. He used to fight too. Like he fought for Bellator back in the day and a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh, I didn't even know that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, dude. He's a, he's a really good teacher too. He's uh, he's very passionate about you know his craft. Yeah, and I really like admire people like Justin because Justin is one of those people where I can't say like about it. Like a lot of people, he's there for you like in the gym and outside of the gym. I mean, like I feel like especially like now with like jujitsu culture and martial arts, you need a lot of people like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's really cool that it, like um, he's one of those people I can go to. For sure. Who are those people that you can go to? Like when it comes to the mixed martial arts world, like who's, who's your team? Uh, I would say for like, if for sure would be like my, my, my Armando Reina, which is like my very first coach for like everything that I started with back in Indiana. I can always go to him. I see him like a father figure. Same thing with Justin Lemke. I see those guys as a father figure. Michael Mutter for sure. Cause he's, you know what I'm saying? The and uh, there's probably like a couple of like friends that I met that I can go to, you know what I'm saying? Like this, so many names I can name, but just like I'm just saying, a couple of friends, just like a lot of friends in my head. But yeah, those are like the main key figures. Absolutely, no, yeah, that's uh, it's always nice to have people in your corner. It's always nice to have more people you can count in your corner too. I mean, that's that's awesome, man. Um, when it comes to uh, APFC though, how how did uh, how did you get called for this fight? Was it Anthony Pettis that called you up and said, "Hey, Rico, I want you to come fight," or was it Showtime management? Or yeah, it was the Showtime management. So after the end of after my NFFC fight, which was in April, right, I was supposed to fight on the next one, which is the June card. So I was sitting on the shelf, you know, I, mean? I was supposed to have a fight with Devin Sites. I didn't materialize, so I, I didn't end up fighting. So my manager was like, he's like, it's okay. Just, you know, now I'll have something for you. We'll try to get you on the Showtime card, find your opponent. So my manager was contacting me, you know, saying they was already having a plan for me to get me on the anti Pettis' card. So I had the first opponent locked in. Didn't work out. So I waited a couple of weeks. Wasn't sure if I was for sure going to be on the show or not. And then it found me another person, you know, it's locked in, sent the contract. I was like, all right, boom. So just a matter of like, you know, little hurdles, not not the super um super overwhelming that we had to get through, but just some like little hurdles in a way that like we just had to fight game politics, basically. Yeah, essentially. So like I knew I just had to stay patient, trust in my team and trust in my manager, then I was gonna get back in there for sure. Okay, fair enough. Um when APFC is coming about, um it's 
in a different environment than any other fight that I'm sure you've been in. It's going to be outside. It's going to be at a baseball field. So, I mean, and there's going to be a, a lot of people there. It does, does the environment of being outside and maybe not in an arena or dome, does that change anything for you? Is like, is that something that's going to be weird? You think? Oh, no. I mean, I, when I fought for street beats, I spent most of the time fighting outside it was barefooted in the grass, in the mud. I mean, I fought in California for street beats one time. I'm like, with hay barrels and like 115 degree weather. So no matter what environment the setting is, like it don't make a difference to me. For sure. Yeah. And I guess uh, you, you've really been battle tested outside because of the street <laughs> beefs. I mean, dude, I remember there was the one fight where I, I don't, it's a little foggy, but I think you tackled the guy into the hay or he tackled you into the hay <laughs> yep. where, the, where, the, where the cage is supposed to be. So, I mean, hey, I don't think you're going to be going to Daddy Hay or anything like that this fight. But, hey, you never know, man. It is it is Wisconsin, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I done seen all the different environments and just ready for whatever, man. We could be in the cage. We could be outside. Baseball, stadium, field, don't matter. I'm just ready. For sure. Dude, your um your management company, um, you're managed by Showtime Sports. Um, they they text me every now and then. They're happy that uh, you know, I bring a lot of their guys onto the podcast. So shout out to them. Um, but they um trying to think of how to wear this. They have someone like Anthony Pettis, they have Sergio Pettis, they have people at the top of the caliber. What do they do for you that makes it so you're comfortable being there that you put your trust in them? I mean, really just like reinsurance, I feel like it's the biggest thing. And just um, they always like look out for me, you know what I'm saying? Or just like making sure I'm good. Like, hey, do you need anything? Or maybe like they try to hook me up with like sponsors or try to get me in somewhere for like, you know, relatively cheap or like, um, you know what I'm saying? As far as like uh, not to go too much. Well, yeah, I'm going to go into it a little bit. So like the week of so this last jiu-jitsu match when I fought Romero, I blew my back out Monday grappling like I went for it like I had I think I went for a takedown so I blew my back I was like fuck like I might have got, I might have to pull out so I, I hit up my manager like yo my back's done I can barely I can't even walk you know what I'm saying I had to like get help to walk back to my car to drive home and they hooked me over to chiropractor for like super duper cheap I think it's like 20 bucks or something like that so just little things like that just looking out for me making sure I'm good getting back up to help and things like that definitely plays a huge factor for sure. I want to get back into uh, another question I have in Showtime, but going to the what you just mentioned, getting a little back injury in the Ramiro grappling match. Um, and I and I and I don't mean this like in a disrespectful way or something like that, but when I saw that you were grappling a couple weeks for your fight, I was like, I was a little nervous for you, you know, because I was like, damn, dude, like, you know, he's doing something very highly competitive and he's doing it two weeks before a huge fight. Did that go into your head at all you were thinking like oh i can get hurt doing this like doing this can completely jeopardize my fight in two weeks i mean sort of kind of not really because uh it's something i've done before like i done done grappling matches like before my fight and i done i done done like a grappling match like after my fight you know what i'm saying but i mean it stays in my mind like hey i can get injured and stuff like that but i know like myself enough to know like the awareness and positions is like you know, stay from so I don't get injured. I can be healthy and go back into it. And for you, like, fortunately, with this match with Romero, like nothing was super injured, nothing crazy. So I, I'm healthy and get him right back and go back into it. For sure, are you feeling 100 percent right now? Yeah, 100 percent right now. Back super good. Injuries all like all healed up, so I'm, I'm fine and ready to go. Sweet man, I'm glad to hear that. Um, w- going back to my APFC, my next question in that, yeah. um. Your goals, like we mentioned earlier and in the previous podcast you were on, are to make it big, whether it's the UFC, 1FC, 1, etc. Um, how far away do you think you are? Does does your management company, do they tell you that at all? Like, are you close to being on a Dana White contender series or anything like that? You know, to be honest, I haven't really, like, asked them or, like, really popped that question. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I know I'm only, like, this will be my fourth pro fight, so... Still in my mind, I just think I'm further, like further away, but maybe I'm close away. You know what I'm saying? I don't really like, um, I don't know. I guess I don't really like to like get into that like hype as much, but like, you know, I know when my time comes, my time is coming. You know what I'm saying? So essentially, I'm just like I said, I'm stay ready. You know, whether it's now or later. You know, so yeah. Do you think that there, um, there's a certain day that you want to be there? Not a certain day, a certain year or age you want to be there by? Like, I know you say you haven't given it too much thought, but I mean, it'd be nice to be there when you're still in your 20s. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I could get there, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm 25 right now. 
I'm about to be 26 Sunday. <laughs> so um, hey, happy birthday, man. <laughs> so you know, if I can get to my 20s, that'd be cool. Like even in like my early 30s, you know what I'm saying? Like those prime years, that'd be fine with me too. As long as I'm not there like 35, 36, 40, then I'm like, okay, like I probably really ain't got no much time left to like really, really make this happen. But yeah. 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 I think um everyone not everyone i think a lot of people they try to rush um where they want to be you know like if let's just say that rico tally let's say he you want to be in the ufc one day um you don't maybe want to be there when you're 24 years old because maybe you're just not ready for that you're not as battle tested as some of these other guys I, compared to when maybe you're 26 or 27 years old you have another i don't know three four fights on your belt and maybe that's the right time to be there and you have to think too a, a grown-ass man they're not really a grown-ass man so they're like that 27 30 year age so i mean like you're still gonna get some more strength and testosterone or whatever it is in a couple of years here like maybe you're in that stage of your life now but i mean there's it, it's cool to see that you're at peace with where you want to be you know yeah, like I said, I'm in no big rush. You know, I'm like, I'm a, I'm a very patient person. I'm in no rush to like jump to the top or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I like the essentially like flying under the radar. It's always kind of been like my style, like that under radar, underdog type of like um type of scenario. So for me right now, like I'm on peace where I'm at. I know like they say like, I don't know if you're a religious person, but they always say like patience is a virtue and I believe in that. So when something's good is going to happen or I get that good karma from the universe or whatever you believe in, I know my time will come. Yeah, man, I'm i uh, I'm Christian too. So I believe, uh, you know, the same stuff, you know, just put your faith in the right places and God and Jesus and things like go, go right for you. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. Does that, uh, does that play a big uh, role in your life? Christianity? Uh, for sure, you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, like, I I personally believe that, like, God will always make a way for good people, you know what I'm saying? And it shows all the time, you know what I'm saying? All the times you believe that something good will happen, God will make it happen. If you've been a good person all your life or tried to at least be a better person, God will definitely, like, shine a little bit of light on you, you know what I'm saying? And it puts you in the right direction. If not, then, like, you know, you've been bad, like, you know what I'm saying? Not a great person your whole life. You've always been, like, really shitty to people, disrespectful. It, it shows, too, you know what I'm saying? Then all those negative things start playing in your life. And I feel like, and that's what anything, not even just for religion necessarily, right? If you you do good things to good people, you have good deeds kind of return back to you in a, in a weird way, right? But if you do bad things to people your whole life, nothing good will ever come to you. Yeah, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't cost anything to be, be a kind person. And uh, there's always benefits to being a kind person there's not always benefits to being a bad mean nasty rude person whatever word you want to put on it so there's always good things that come back to you like you said exactly yeah um guys in the in the gym right now um who kind of fits that category for you of like uh someone that's you're helping out with a lot like and the reason I asked that is because I know you coach a little bit of jujitsu here and there is there someone that you've taken under your wing recently when it comes to the jujitsu or grappling game because I mean you're such a high level grappler dude even though you're only a purple belt I feel like you should have been you should be a black belt already <laughs> oh uh there's uh two guys in particular it is uh is uh 17 no I think he just turned 18 if I'm not mistaken his name is Nico Moreno and his other kid and his name's Connor uh I'm gonna probably butcher his last name probably be mad at me if he hears this but it's it's Connor B's Wagner. Those are like two kids. I kind of took them under my wing and like put them onto some game and they've been having like a lot of really good success. And I feel like it's weird to see somebody grow from when they first started and then a couple of months go by, a couple of years go by and you just, you, you look back on it like, damn, this is like, like that little boy I started doing privates with, you know what I'm saying? Now he's like this, like this grown man strength body. Like it's just, it's, it's just crazy to see it. It's just unbelievable. For sure. Um, have you seen them uh, grapple and or grapple competitively yet, or is it just in practice? Just in practice. Uh, with Nico, like I seen him wrestle. I went to one of his wrestling meets. I think it was for section or something like that a couple of months ago. So I got to see him wrestle, support him, and do his stuff. And he looked really good. With Connor, I got to see him compete at his first. Uh, not. Uh, his not his first amateur fight, but like you know, what I'm saying a gamma fan creation. So I got to see the growth. I just all those months of working with him, I was like super happy with how he did. Just the progression, man. It's just like, damn, this kid could really be something good one day. And knowing Absolutely. I was a little bit of a help in his journey makes me happy. 
Hell yeah, man. Um, and where I was kind of going with that question is uh, something that people have been saying on the podcast lately. It's probably because I've been having a lot more coaches on the podcast than normal, <laughs> but they say that um, having have, for them to be in the position to watch people grow and accomplish their dreams is more rewarding for them than actually accomplishing the dreams themselves. Because they said when they get into the cage, when they get into the octagon, when they win, it's more of a relief. When they see someone they coach win, it's more of like a hell yes, you know, like they're proud of them. They're excited. They're not relieved. They're just, uh, they're excited. They're ready to go. Are you really at that point in your career yet where it's like more rewarding to, have someone that you coach win compared to yourself or are you still in the, in the hungry prime of your career where it's like, nah, it's, you still gotta be selfish about it. I'm, I, I like, I feel like I'm a little bit of both. Like when I'm in there, I'm like super hungry, highly motivated, ready to go. But then when I see one of like my teammates or my friends or something fighting, like, I'm just like, yeah, especially if I train with them like ostensibly, right. And then seeing them go out there, cut, you know what I'm saying? Smash their goals and crush them. Just like, yeah, it just, it's really, it's, and it's really rewarding. For me personally, because it just makes me so happy and ecstatic that I know like all the sacrifices, all the work and all the little extra stuff they had to do, you know, and then they go out there and do what they, you know, what I'm saying do what they was like, essentially kind of like trained to do. Right. And then they go out there and do it. It's just like it's very happy. It's very rewarding. And it, like you said, it happened for sure. Uh, switching gears a little bit here to like uh, the pro fight game, like on a major scale, I guess, the UFC. Um, there's been a lot of skepticism uh, in the MMA community saying that maybe the fight cards haven't been that great this year. Um, but the UFC, I don't know, 279 upcoming here through like 282. I mean, these these cards are absolutely looking out to be stacked fights. Is there any card that you're looking forward to see? Um, I'm trying to think like the Juliana Pena card. That was a super good card to see with Juliana Pena and man and Nunes. I think the card, I forget the number, but it's, um, it's with Comjet Chamaya and Nate Diaz. I'm really looking forward to like that whole card is like stacked. I think it's Peter Yan, Sugar Sean O'Malley. Like I'm really excited to that one. Yeah, I think that's I think that's two seventy nine. I could be wrong on that, but I don't know. What do you What do you think about them giving uh Nate Diaz his last fight ever? And the UFC arguably is going to be against Chamayev. I mean, do you think that's you think that's a little too much for him to handle? Nate Diaz is a you know he's a gangster man. He's an OG man. Like you can't never count Nate Diaz out. Like that Leon Edwards fight. Like you give that <laughs> other thirty seconds. See, like Nick, Nick Nate Diaz would shock the world again. You know, what I'm saying if he knocked out Leon Edwards. So like I'm all excited when he fights. Same thing with Nick. Like when he came back and fought Rob Law, I'm like man, it's still like that same like little like giggly feeling like you watch him like one of like your heroes or like your icons get in there and fight again so you know it's a good like it's like a lot of people might say stylistically it's a horrible matchup for him that he's gonna like Nate Diaz is gonna get dominated or something right but like Nate Diaz has done like crazy stuff before like I remember the first fight with Connor everybody and like they mom was counting him out then he goes out there and like rocks Connor and like submits him and then shook up the world yeah <laughs> yeah I mean it's um He's definitely one of those guys that you could never count on. I mean, like he he is lethal, like you said, he is a gangster. I mean, the guy, I mean, he's always got that puncher's chance in him. I mean, I feel like he's one of those guys that's just impossible to knock out. You know, he's just he's just gonna keep coming at you regardless of who you are. Like he doesn't give a shit that he's going up against Chamayo. Nope. Dude, yeah. I mean, I'm excited for that. Yeah, I mean, like they got that mentality, kill it, be killed. So, you know, I'm always gonna be an AD as fan at heart. For sure. Who are you taking in that one? If I, I know you gamble a little bit in the sports, uh, in the fighting here and there. Who are you going to gamble on for that one? Man, it's hard because like, I know for sure, like, it's going to be good money bet, like, you know, betting on um, Nate Diaz. But I think, like, the odds right now, I think it's, like, mine is, like, 1,100 if you bet on Chamaya. Yeah. So, money, I think, like, Nate Diaz will, like, plus 600. So, that, that's some crazy money to win. Like, if you bet 100 bucks, what's that, 600? So that, you know... um. If I want to make a smart bet, I would bet on Chamaya. But I'll probably put a couple of bucks on Nate Diaz just in case he comes back and, like, knocks him out on, like, the fourth or fifth round. Dude, I feel like the odds are so against uh, uh, Diaz right now. If you put any amount of money on him, you could just retire if he was. <laughs> like, yeah. But, like, put a good grand on him. Like, that's retirement money. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially you parlay that, dude. You're going to be a, you're gonna be a wealthy man. <laughs> like, it's a wrap. <laughs> And no more. Like you work your nine to five job, quit. <laughs> quit like, it. 
<laughs> Thanks, Nate Diaz, for my retirement fund. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I, I don't know. Does that put that be up there with like probably 10 greatest upsets of all time if it happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, easily. Yeah. I feel like it'd be right up there with uh, what Buster Douglas and Mike Tyson upset wise. I mean, I don't know if it'd be that big, but I mean, like, it'd definitely be up there. Exactly. Especially with all the hype on Chamaya. Like, he, he goes out there, finishes him. It's over. And then Nate, like, Nate Diaz, the last part in the contract, doesn't come back. Like, how how that not be great? Yeah. What about uh, what about Makachev versus uh, Oliveira? Dude, that one I'm really excited oh. for. Little one, like I'm, I'm like really like in between who's gonna win that because both were super good, right? Both got good striking, good grappling. You know, what I'm saying, well, Makachev, good sambo, Oliveira, good jiu jitsu. You know, what I'm saying, world class jiu jitsu. So it's really more so who can impose it will first. I feel like that's who will win. Dude, I, I've, I, I haven't actually like placed money down on on because you can't sports gamble in wisconsin for some dumbass reason but uh i've never like placed money on any fighters but like you know how like when you're with buddies you know you say like you think this guy's gonna win that guy's gonna win i've never said Oliveira is gonna win before i thought Gaethje might have beat him i thought um anyone that he saw in the past i thought he was probably gonna take an l too i was wrong i'm done betting against Oliveira, man i am never gonna say Oliveira is gonna lose again i'm taking Oliveira in the makachev fight i have to he's proved me wrong too many times i'm a fan now i mean michael chandler you know what i'm saying dustin poirier justin gaethje and like he finished all of them yeah so, um, he finishes makachev calls out khabib come on now <laughs> dude do you think khabib would come out for him i mean you beat your you beat his first band in like his hometown like or whatever, like, I feel like he would have to. But could, no one could be, like, I feel like he'll still honor, like, you know what I'm saying, his father's wishes to, like, fight again. But you never know. That yeah. might be the back and, like, okay, I'm back for one more fight. <laughs> could you imagine, dude, if Khabib came out? That'd be that'd be one of the biggest fights in, in MMA history, dude. And that, that would go down, like you said, the biggest fight of all time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I just uh want to end the podcast um with giving you the opportunity to help promote yourself or promote your fight. Uh, you know, tell all the people listening why they should come out and watch Rico Tally at APFC on August 12th. Man, why you guys should come watch me, man. You you watching a young kid go out there and try to achieve his dream. Not many people can say they can do that, no. So like Come out, support me, because this would be the time, right? Don't, like, wait to support me until you see me on TV or something, right? Be like, oh, hey, I knew that guy. Like, support me now, like, the local regional scene, while you still see me upcoming, while you still see me rising, grinding, putting in all, like, this hard work just so I can, like, be great and support myself and my family one day, you know? So come see the, come see the fight, get your tickets all online, and watch me get this dub come August 12th. Hell yeah, man, dude. I, I am so excited for you to fight. I'm not going to be there in person, but I'm definitely going to buy the fight and watch it, man. I I am like, I'm not just kissing your ass because you're on the podcast. I am excited to watch you fight, man. You're one of my favorite fighters, you go. means a lot. I truly appreciate that. Hell yeah, man. Well, dude, you have yourself a great weekend, man. Keep training, you know, uh, best wishes to you. Don't get hurt. Have a safe fight camp. But I, I again, I'm super excited to watch you fight. Go out there and open up a can of whoop ass, man. Yes, sir. Thank you again for always, like, giving me the opportunity to talk and be on a podcast. Like, I, I was just listening to Funky Birds, you know what I'm saying? Like, earlier, then I listened to, I always listen to Yo-Yo when he's on here, Mark Charlesky, and all the other, like, great guys and girls we had on the podcast. So I appreciate the opportunity a lot. Thanks, man. No, I really appreciate you, man. It's nice to, uh, you know, obviously you're in the fight community. Um, you know, I'm sure it feels pretty good for you when you inspire people and have fans and stuff like that. So when I get positive feedback on my work, my art, you know, I really appreciate that as well. So thanks, man. It means a lot. Yeah, thank you, man. And it's crazy when you hit me up to do the podcast because I think, was that the very first person you did for the podcast? Yeah, you're like, the first one. <laughs> so it, it's super cool just to see the growth, right? Because you was like, Okay, I remember we was talking about it. He's like, hey, I'm starting this idea. I want to get this going or whatever. Then we got your house. We're talking. And then, like, a couple of weeks go by, you, like, everybody and their mom is on, you know, on here. So, I'm like, that's super dope to, like, to be there for the very first one. And then now just still the ball and still, like, it's like the evolution, right? You see it start from the bottom, and then you see it go from, like, the top. So, it's really cool to be a part of this. 
Hell yeah, man. I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's cool. I'm, I'm glad to be able to, to have you on as the first guest, you know, cause I was like, damn, you know, is, is Rico going to come on? Rico's, you know, he's a pretty big fighter. So like that, I was pretty nervous to ask you. And then when you came on, you were like, you know, really happy to be there. And I thought that conversation went great. I was really, uh, really happy with myself and really happy that you came on and I appreciate you, uh, you know, seeing the growth and, you know, appreciating the growth of it. And you're always welcome back on, man. After you open up the can of Wolf Ass on August 12th, I want to have you back on again to talk about it, man. Dude, you yeah. know what, what would be a cool episode if we can get Showtime's permission to do it would maybe be breaking the fight down after you win. And then you and I can be talking about it and stuff like that. That'd be dope to do like a like a breakdown while on the that'd be dope to do, yeah. Yeah, let me let me see what I can do on that. That'd be sweet though, man. I'd I'd be excited to do something like that if you're down. Yeah, I'm always down, man. You, you know, I'm just one call or text away. Just let me know. <laughs> awesome. Hey, I appreciate that, Rico. Have a great weekend, bro. You too, man. Thank you. God bless. Hell yeah. God bless, man.